Martin Hall joined by Blair O'Neill and Jim McLean, uh, one of my favorite teachers, no doubt. He's a fellow PGA Teacher of the Year, World Golf Teachers Hall of Fame. I mean, his credentials could fill up this whole piece mm -hmm. that we're about to film. However, we're going to pick his brains today. You ready for that, McLean? Re ready, I'm ready. Sounds okay. good. Uh, Blair, we're going to talk about release. Now, okay. that's a, it's a wide term. It means a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, way too many people think it means, you know, just like a dog would wag his tail, people are just wagging the club around the body. Uh, would you like that as a uh, sort of a definition of release? No, that's a bad definition. Yes, I think it's a <laughs> terrible yeah. definition. Let's not do that. Let's not beat around the bush no. now. It's a terrible definition. So let's talk about, and you've been, you've, you've, you've done more research than anybody I know about the golf swing, although I'm trying to catch up with you. I know. But, <laughs> uh, but you've done so much. And, but, but people have influenced you. I mean, you've had Byron Nelson influence you. You've had uh, Ken Venturi influence you. Gene Sarazen influence you. Jimmy Ballard, a big influence mm -hmm. on you. And they all talked about using the right side, didn't they? Correct. So if Correct. you would take, take Blair through a little sort of McLean 101 <clears throat> clinic on what does it mean to release the right side, not just the club. So get in there and get, okay. get working with this girl. <laughs> okay. Blair, the first thing I'll do is take away the club, okay? okay. And then take away your left arm. Okay. Now you get your right arm yes. to feel what's happening. Now the right arm creates the width in the backswing. So if you keep this right hand and right arm away from you, if you now try to take your left arm all the way up to there, that's a long reach. Yes. And so that's extension and getting. I feel it. Yeah, you can feel the <laughs> extension out there. So it's really this right arm. If you bend this right arm in close, then you start to lose the left arm, Correct. of course. You lose the width to your swing. So the right arm, this could be as relaxed as you want. If you push that right arm away from you, you're going to have a good, strong left arm. Okay. You know, at the top of the swing. Feels good. So, and then when we talk about right arm, yeah, as a power move or the release, as Martin was talking about, that was just backswing. As we start down, we want to have this right arm and right elbow fall down, and the elbow leads the hand as it starts down and gets into a throw position. Okay. And when you, when you get to right here and, and you bring your right arm down, it kind of automatically, like you did, pushes your left side out of the way yes. without thinking about right. it. So a natural. one of the great things we've done in teaching, Martin's done it a lot, is the idea of throwing a ball half underhanded, half sidearm this way, or anybody that's taken a flat rock and skipped it across the Right, lane. okay. So let me see you. That, that same way. feeling. Yeah. And as you do that, your right arm will go from bent to extension. Yes. And that's what we want to feel. And then if you put your left ar hand on there and just let it be relaxed okay. and get that same right arm, right hand feeling right. Now, when we hit a golf ball, you're doing it beautifully, of course. It was a good, really good top professional. But you feel the whole right side because we just talked about right arm. But really, it's the right knee, the right hip, the right shoulder. Everything's moving through, and there's expansion happening from your right arm going through to the extension position okay. that way. So I've been with a lot of great players that have focused from time to time, we all adjust in golf, of thinking of the trail side, the right side, and letting this left arm be very relaxed. Because if this left side moves out of the way, and as you move down, as we've been talking about, and extend that right arm out, your left arm's going to work really good automatically. It'll just follow along naturally, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Jim, can I just make a point sure. before Blair hits one here? So um, bo both <clears throat> of us still teach lots of ordinary golf. Right. I always say 15 handicappers, uh, you know, players of any standard. And, and some, some people have this idea that you should tuck your right elbow into your side. I don't think that's what you're saying, is no. it? No. The right arm goes out in front of the hip. That yeah. way. There you go. And I, I think from a teacher's point of view, I know for me, the idea that the elbow leads the hand is, is vital to good yeah. ball striking. If the hand starts leading the right. elbow, we've got a real problem. We've dissipated all the power. So I think when you're coming down, you know, sort of stepping and rotating a bit and just letting the elbow, that's a good drill there to just, I got this from Ben Doyle years yeah. ago. Oh, yeah. Just get that elbow and smack that hand there. And that gives you, I mean, things in golf have fashions and trends as we as we talk about when we're on the phone. And right now, trail shoulder external rotation mm. is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Well, just get your elbow to do that. That'll give you all the trail shoulder external rotation you need. It doesn't need to be any more than that. So you should do that. All right, I'm That's doing no, it. No, 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 <laughs> drill time, drill okay. time, drill time. <laughs> there you go. 
That would okay. be great. So let's have a let's have a practice swing. All right. Getting here. Okay. And I think that gives that gives the feeling of the club somewhat lagging behind. Doesn't yes. It? All righty. And it feels powerful too. I feel. That's because it is. Yeah. And you see, Blair really continues with the right side. Your right side moves so nicely through the golf ball. Thank you. And as you come through the golf ball, the right side keeps moving. That's part of the release and ends up being higher than the left shoulder. So the, the left shoulder comes from low, right shoulder down, right shoulder up. That's part of the entire release. Yeah, one of the things, I'm just going to pause that, you know, <clears throat> while we've got Jim McLean here, um, you know, long before we actually met Blair, if you can just set up to the golf ball, I'm going to pull Jim back here. Mm -hmm. And in your original book, The Eight Step Swing, or the, the first eight step swing right. version, you talked about what an important checkpoint it is in release, that at some point after impact, the lead shoulder, which for Blair is the left shoulder, disappears right. behind the neck. I think that's so important. That's part of the release because if the lead shoulder stays in view, just move the club head this way, if the lead shoulder stays in view, inevitably, then the left arm, lead arm, is going to collapse. You and break people down. Think, people think, I can't get my left arm straight. It's like, well, you won't keep your left <laughs> arm straight if you don't keep moving right. the shoulders. I mean, this little drill I'm doing here where I, I do this with all my students, I will grab and make the shoulders move. They move on a tilt, there's no doubt about it, but the shoulders have to keep moving. I mean, I think once you get into motion, I don't think there's a point where the shoulders stop moving until the very, very end of mm -hmm. The motion. You don't want this idea that you know your shoulders stop and the arms go, because that will give you hookus giganticus. Oh, we don't like that. No, I definitely <laughs> don't like that. I've had too many of those in my life. Right. So here we go. One more. So Keep one everything more moving. Feeling. Release the right side. Good release. Release that right, right on side target. through the ball. Now, yep. I got one other question for you, Jim. So, you did this video um, 20 years ago uh, with Sam Sneed. You went up yeah. to the Greenbrier and did this video with um, right. with Sam, and that must have been fantastic. And so, the thing I've always been so intrigued with um, is is the Sam was credited with saying, "Hold the club like you're holding a little bird." Now, the only time I met him, I had him hold my two fingers like the little bird, and it was fairly firm and I think one of your mentors Jackie Burke said yeah what people didn't realize was Sneed was talking about a sparrow hawk. <laughs> um, your view on grip pressure, I mean, how light is too light, how tight is too tight? Well I've used a 1 to 10 scale with 5 being in the middle and I, I, I'm pretty definite with that in all my golf schools. We go through it in detail up and down the scale. So it, you want to be around 4 or 5 in, in the terms of tightness. You're not down at one or two. But Snead had very relaxed wrists. Oh. I think that's what he was talking about. Very relaxed wrists, soft body, quick movement. That's how you get quick movement from relaxation. When you're tight, you get slow. I think, that, I think that's so good. So grip pressure, uh, you know, you may be holding a bird, but it's about four or five on a scale of one right. to ten. It is the wrist that be, may be right. Jim, I always treasure our time together. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so Mark. much for being yes, with us today. Yes, Jim, thank you, thank you so you. much. Thanks. Great stuff there. And hope this helps you with the release. For more great tips, make sure to subscribe to Golf Channel on YouTube and watch School of Golf.